All right, this is example two of finding the rate of change of a polynomial function using estimation. Now, here's where we are going to estimate, uh, which will work for polynomial functions, but as we get move along in the course, estimating is kind of like finding the instantaneous velocity, uh, but cheating in a way, which again will not work as we move through the course and especially when you get to calculus, if you do, for those of you who are taking calculus. But uh, here's the key words, and this is the only time that you can use this method of estimating, all right, uh, because we're finding an instantaneous uh, rate of change, so you have to use a limit unless it says estimate, so those are key words. Now, to find the instantaneous rate of change and to estimate, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope formula once again, but to estimate, because uh, in this case I'm using a t equals 4 here, so I'm going to have a y2 and a y1 up top, again referring to our grade 9 slope formula. So our s of 4 is going to be our y1. Now our y2 is because I'm estimating, I'm going to pick some value in there uh, that's just slightly above 4. Again, with our instantaneous rate of change, we are finding the slope at one point, but really we're doing two points. It's that h value that we're moving so close together they look like one. Well, here we're just going to estimate, and again, you have to go into like the hundreds. So I'm going to find s of zero point uh, or s of zero, s of four point zero one, one one hundredth bigger than four. So again, it's not the h value, which is zero, but it's a little bit higher. So it's not not such a big deal. And again, down below we have our x two. I chose again. I chose my. Uh, x2 to be 1 one hundredth bigger than 4, and again our x1 is 4. Now to substitute in, I'm going to save a little time here, is if I want s of 4.01, I would have to sub 4.01 into this equation, make a calculation, figure out what I get, and for me, uh, I have already done that, and I got 41.9. Alright, you have to redo that, but this time in the equation we're going to substitute in a 4, because that's our t value, and I got a nice number of 42. Alright, so now I'm just going to substitute those values into our slope equation, so I have 41.9 minus 42, and in the bottom I've got 4.01, subtract 4, all right, I do a little math here. Let's see here, forty-one dollars and ninety cents minus forty-two. I'm going to have ten cents left, or minus ten cents, I should say. And down below, I'm going to have point uh, zero one. And if I divide those two, I'm going to get minus ten. And again, the units were meters for height, seconds for time. And again, that would mean in this case that the pebble. At 4 seconds, I would estimate that the velocity would be 10 meters per second. Again, if uh, you ever take physics, the minus sign means it's headed downwards. Alright, so again, the only time you can use this method to find an instantaneous velocity is if it uses the word estimate. You do this uh, for when I ask you for the instantaneous velocity or calculate the velocity at a one number and you don't use the limit, uh, you're not going to get any marks for it. But if it says estimate, you can use this way. Again, uh, as we move through the course, this will not work for some functions, and in calculus it won't work for a lot of functions. So, just an example, just trying to explain the difference between average velocity, instantaneous velocity, and estimating the instantaneous velocity. Hope this helps.